Well, looks like we're back, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks like we're back, but uh, yeah, before we do get into the video, guys, I do need to address the uh, the elephant in the room. Um, for those of you who don't know, of course, I know there's a large portion of you guys, which is understandable, you only watch this channel to watch me blabber on about Sunderland and other shit. I completely understand that, so I'll keep this short and sweet. Uh, for those who are up to date, or who are aren't, should I say, um, I have taken a bit of a break recently, and I'm not fully back yet, but I am going to try and uh, just wean my way back onto, of course, my uh, computer needs to update now, because I haven't touched it for so long. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm just weaning my way back onto, onto doing videos for you guys again. But um, for those of you who don't know, I did take a bit of a mental health break. We're getting there, and I just want to quickly say thank you again uh, to everyone who has supported me. Uh, the comments have been just ridiculous in just sheer amount and sheer niceness if that's a word you know messages on uh, on twitter instagram social media all over the shot it has been overwhelming and it has helped me a hell of a lot so i do appreciate that um not only for you know your kindness but your understanding which is the key word for it so i do appreciate that um and you know if if you don't know what i'm talking about go watch the the previous video and i do want to just hit on the topic of that video you know i'm not a mental health expert i'm not at all i don't have the answers i'm only just speaking from my personal um scenario or my personal experience so don't take everything i say gospel you have to do this because i'm doing it you know and i am also aware that my mental health issues uh, are far inferior to to others i know that i don't have it the worst in the world i just hope that isn't the way it was portrayed because it absolutely isn't i'm just obviously or have been struggling um, but either way, again, thank you so much for the support. We have a lot to catch up on, don't we? We have about three weeks worth of Sunderland's moaning about. So uh, let's get into it again. Thank you for your support. Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I'm just going to give my thoughts and uh, yeah, my, my sort of thoughts on Sunderland's start to the season. Of course, there's quite a bit to go over, so I'm going to really, really minimalise it just for this video, because I know a lot of you guys want to know what I've thought and what I've made of Sunderland the start to the season, and a little bit of news going into this weekend's game against Coventry. So, the opening three game of the season, or sorry, opening three games of the season, I did go to the opening game um, against Ipswich, I was there at Preston as well, so I've seen the worst, and then of course on TV I did watch last week's win, our first win in the season against Rotherham. So, in terms of our, uh, of our performances... I think we've had three almost identical performances and I'm just going to say exactly what everyone else has been saying. It just screams out a striker. I left that Ipswich game absolutely infuriated. And, you know, fair play to Ipswich. They've gone on to have a fantastic start to the season. That's not me saying they're a bad team with what I'm about to go and say, but they were so unbelievably predictable and it seemed very, very easy to play against. But we were just so useless in the final third because of lack of said striker. They were so easy. It was as if they, particularly in the first half anyway, I'll say that, particularly in the first half against Ipswich, it was as if they were just simply told, play it out for the back and nothing more. Because they were doing the same thing over and over again. Keeper gets it, rolls it out to a defender, they lose it, and then we do nothing in the final third. Or they'll pump it forward, we'll pick it up, piss around with it, beautiful pretty football, but do absolutely nothing with it again in the final third. And then when they did break, fair play to them, they took care of their chances. You know, in the second half, we were a bit more poor. But in that first half, they were just so easy to read, so easy to play against, and we were awful. And again, fair play to you at Switch, that isn't me being, you know, sour grapes, because they were really clinical going forward, of course. Um, and of course, they had a familiar goal scorer as well, obviously. Um, so that was a really bitter pill, that one, because I just think with, you know, a half decent striker on the pitch, we would have walked that game by half time. Personally, that's what I feel anyway. Same with Preston. Preston were a little bit more sort of organised to an extent, but I still felt like it was very, very similar in the sense that we're playing the ball around really well. The goals we could see were so cheap, being deflections and what have you. And we just weren't creating chances. It, you know, the only thing we have really is Clark coming off the. Uh, off, off one side and Roberts off the other uh, and that was really it you know we had all this pretty football nice triangles it's all nice to watch but when there's no end product it's absolutely pointless when you've got no you've got no vocal point up top you know and at times our defence are defending like toddlers which they do they have those lapses in concentration or the midfield which isn't the most experienced they have one moment of a lapse of concentration where they're not or maybe they're over committing 
uh, to, to give them more space around our final third or our defence in general are over committing or, or the out of position, which can happen. But these teams and at this level, we get punished. And that's exactly what happened against Preston. Now, it was almost an identical performance against Rotherham. You know, went a goal down um, after we dominated the play. They had their chance and they put it away. Again, fair play to them. Again, shows how clinical teams in this league are. But we managed to carve out chances of our own. And it was as if we were just fed up and not having a strike. And we went for it. And we managed to get our first three points of the season. But they were almost three identical performances. And we just managed to get away with it against a relatively poor Rotherham side. This is why we are so desperate for a striker. So that's my sort of summary of the opening few games of the season. Um, going into this weekend's game, we've learned Roberts is out injured. He's not expected to be back until September at some point which is an absolute kick in the balls because we currently have, I think it's 11, 12 players out injured. Some long-term, some some more younger players who don't play too much anyway. But we have a hell of an injury table at the moment. A hell of an injury table. And are we going to now look to rely on Hamia? You know, Hamia played, I think it was our last night or the night before, uh, for, for the youth side and got himself a goal. He looked relatively dangerous there. Um, he also missed and, well, he took on the keeper and pissed around with it and, Made an absolute hash of his chance, but um, but that's by the by. As a young player, he'll make sort of rash decisions like that, I suppose. But it, how are we going to play this? We've also got a uh, a lad from Ukraine. It's almost been confirmed. Well, it has been confirmed by a Ukrainian outlet um, on Twitter, who I believe do have some substance to them, and they do have some validity that we have signed the uh, striker. I think he can play on the wing as well, but striker, Nazari Rusin. We have been linked with him for a long, long time, but rumours on Twitter are saying that we have signed him on a four-year deal. I've watched compilations and all that kind of stuff. I think that's all we can see from him. It looks like an half-decent player, but every compilation makes a player look like a half-decent player. If he is to come, brilliant, because we need a striker desperately, as I say, because I, I just think, you know, so many areas around the pitch. We look very, very good. Like Joe Bellingham against Rotherham was outstanding. He is growing by the game. He's looking more and more the player we, we believed him it, him to be. You know, Birmingham. A lot of Birmingham fans told us that he was a, a flop, a waste of space, etc. And he's looked fantastic for me. I think he's looked really, really good. Just find his right position. He was playing as a centre forward against Rotherham, and he bagged himself a couple of goals. So maybe we just put Joe up top. Um, but there we go. That's that's my thoughts on the season so far. Um, and we really need to start digging away in the transfer market. I know it's difficult, and I know when we lose games, a lot of sorry, a lot of uh, people and fans will get on the board, will get on their back. Speakman, on the whole, if like all the signings have made, that they have been excellent to a degree, but also you can't blame him. You know, he has brought strikers in, and they're all injured. You know, you can't prepare for that. But yes, and you know, it's not like. There's a 20 goal a season striker just sat there waiting for us to get, and he's just deciding and choosing and electing not to go for this player. You know, like when we're getting linked with players, we're linked with Stansfield from Fulham. Um, young lad, he went on loan to Exeter last year. I think he's got 89 goals and uh, quite a few assists. And we got linked with him. Everyone's going mental, saying, Oh, we only scored this amount in League One. Yeah, but he was playing for Exeter, you know, and, and also. You can't just run off a player by looking at their Wikipedia page. You know, everyone saying, "Oh, but he's only got X amount of goals, he's only got this, and he's only got that." So did Sims before he came to us last year. He'd only ever done League One, you know. Um, and players need the opportunity to prove themselves. When we got Ross Stewart, he had, a, he had a, his goal scoring was his, his record anyway piss poor, but uh, you know, and that was in Scotland. So it just shows you need to give players opportunities. That we, we're scouting them and have a look for a reason. The potential is there, and that's what it's all about. Particularly with youth, it's potential. So we can't judge them just by their frigging Wikipedia record. Um, but again, we'll have to see. But that is pretty much everything, I believe, guys. I know I've just rambled away. There was no real structure to this video. I just kind of wanted to get me me feel back for it again and uh, talk into a camera, which is always great. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, guys, hope you are all good. Let me know down in the comments down below. Um, uh, what you think the score is going to be this weekend. Um, I, I won't be doing a, a preview or maybe even a review for this game because I don't even know that I'm going to be able to watch it uh, with other commitments. Um, but yeah, I am going to slowly but surely get back to giving you regular videos. Just uh, just give me a bit of time, a bit of patience, which you already have done. And again, I thank you for that. But either way, if you have enjoyed, hit the like button, hit it a lot, and subscribe if you're new to the channel to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, take care, stay jamming. <laughs>